Um, I'd like to introduce Jim LaSala. Jim specializes in fine art, photography, portraiture, and street documentary, which, was, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, he's won several state, national, and international awards for his photography and has been featured in many publications such as Lenswork, PPA Magazine, and PDN. Um, he's also a Moab master, so if you've ever been to one of our, our trade show that we've been at, you've definitely seen his prints hanging in our booth. Um, so thank you so much, Jim, for taking the time to talk to us today. And I'd like to pass it over to you to get started. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. Um, thank you, uh, Paige, uh, Mark Shotland, Moab, for inviting me here today. Um, it's a pleasure. And also uh, thank you to all the people that are joining us today as well. Um, I have a, I think, a very informative uh, keynote presentation I think you all will be able to benefit from. And um, like I said, if uh, there's any questions, throw them in the chat. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, hopefully I covered most of the things that you might be uh, wondering uh, how I go about photographing people in the street. Uh, it can be unnerving and hopefully I can take some of the mystique out of it. So with uh, any, uh, without any further ado, I guess I will take over the screen. Everything is good. Yes. Okay. So you're in the right place. We're talking about street documentary. Um, I've tried to include a little bit of what's happening today with, uh, obviously the situ uh, the COVID-19 situation. Here we are. Um, as I said before, I want to try to, um, incorporate what's happening today compared to what's happening before. You're going to see, um, a lot of different type of, uh, stories. Um, and, uh, hopefully I can lead you through the streets without, you know, being too paranoid. So. Let's get started. Some people want to try to understand what street photography is. It's many things. It could be um, a chance to photograph, uh, you know, historical and everyday events. It could be strictly candid. Some people uh, think that street photography is only about a candid photograph uh, photography. For me, it's a little bit more. Um, I, I like to talk about not only the the um, the photography part of it or the subject, but I'd like to add a little bit more of the story. So it might include, you know, places and things that will add to that story. So if, if you're a purist and you, and you just want to, uh, photograph just the candid photography, that that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of room for everybody out there to, to do your thing. For me, I like to incorporate many, many, many things. Uh, Paige had, had asked me a little bit about photographing people in the street, and I'm sure everybody else has questions about that as well. Um, it's not, it's, it's a tough it, a situation. I carry a model release with me. Do I always use it? I do not, especially because I'm in and out very quickly. Um, if you have the time, I would always recommend using a model release. Um, it's real simple. You can carry one right on your phone. It's called easy release. It's an app, um, carry it with you. If you have a chance, get their names, get their permissions and all that good stuff. Um, I grabbed this off the internet just to let people know it's okay to go photograph somebody out on in the public streets. Uh, you know, it's really common sense. Sure. It's legal. You can get out there. There's, there's no law that says you cannot photograph somebody, uh, out on the streets in public. Um, please just, I, you know, I guess be concerned and respectful of what you're photographing. And you know what, if the, if the person really is adamant, it's okay. Just kind of move on to the, to the next photograph. So it's all about, it really is about common sense. So for me, I really like to talk about the whole picture be it people, places, and things. I know this sounds silly, but uh, you need a camera. So take it out there with you. Don't leave home without it. I never do. Um, and there's really no excuse now. If for some reason you do forget your camera, uh, I think everybody and their mother is carrying an, an iPhone or, or a uh, cell phone, and you can get some pretty amazing images just using your cell phone. What I love about street photography for me anyway, is 
it's really stress free. I know some people are saying impossible. How do you photograph somebody and not freak out? And it's so intimidating and all that good stuff. Um, no, it's not. It's a place where you can go out and enjoy yourself. Just being a photographer, capturing things that just mean something to you, something that you may want to share with your with your viewers. I come from my, my personal career started out as a, as a wedding photographer. You want to talk about stress? Oh, my God. Um, one of the stressful uh, professions you can do. I know there's a lots of other photography professions that can be tough. But let me tell you, uh, I did it for 14 years. Um, you only have one day to do it. Uh, you got a lot of things that you have to uh, contend with, uh, time constraints, uh, Back then in the analog days, we had to carry extra equipment, you know, backups. God forbid something should go down. We used film. Once you captured it and hopefully you you actually loaded it correctly, if you had a system that loaded it, you prayed that he did it the right way. Uh, then after that, you sent it to the lab. You had clients to deal with. So there was a lot of a lot of stress involved for me out in the street. God, I'm in I'm in my glory. So uh, it's an awesome time to get out there and photograph. If you're a little, uh, you know, nervous or skeptic about photographing people, believe it or not, now that people are, are wearing masks for some reason, uh, it gives us a little advantage. You get out there and photograph people with masks and uh, compliment them on their weird looking masks. And they say, oh, yeah, I'd photograph it. I'd love you to. So you have a little bit of an in that way, actually. So take advantage of, unfortunately, a, a sad situation, but you can get out there. Also, what I like to do sometimes is not only photograph the subject, but I'm, I'm looking for an additional story. Uh, so maybe a secondary uh, subject as well. Uh, these people uh, came into a town, a very small town in New Jersey called Frenchtown. And I think uh, for them, it adds, it continues to add the story. They were there for a reason, a reason and I wanted to be able to capture that as well. Um, and this is uh, last year. And I don't know if anybody knows of uh, the store called Wawa. It, they're all over the country and and they have gas stations. There's a coffee shop. And I, I frequent this place all the time. And for some weird reason, I always find some really cool characters coming out of there. So uh, I'm, I'm always there and always can find something that's pretty cool to share. And here, here is one. Uh, just very simple. Nothing, uh, no, nothing posed. Just get in there and, and have a good time. I think this is really important when you're out in the street. Try to put yourself in their place. I'm, I'm kind of a, an introvert when it comes to talking to people. I like to be on the other end of the camera, but I feel very comfortable uh, talking to people when I'm out there because I'm, I'm kind of a... Uh, I guess uh, I have an equipment, a piece of equipment behind uh, in front of me that kind of blocks me from reality. So it's, it makes it a lot easier for me to converse with people and talk to them and, and get an idea of their of how they, what their life is all about. And I know it sounds silly, but you know what? You can actually ask them. I'd love to have you, you know, photograph you. I find it really interesting. And and another thing is. I, you're going to see a few pictures of dogs in my images. If they have a dog, you got an in. Get in there. You know, uh, people love their dogs taken, and it's a good excuse to photograph them. Here I am in Philadelphia, and I never would have photographed this young lady unless I had actually gone up to her and, and talked to her. Her name was Brooklyn. And I am from Brooklyn, so it, it really hit a chord for me. She was riding a bike. Um, I don't want to be a stalker, but I ran her down and, and found this to be so, so very interesting. She's a model. And I said, I would just love to take a few uh, photographs of you. And the rest really was kind of just history. I couldn't stop photographing her. So if you have a little courage and get out there, uh, you'll be very, very surprised how people react to the camera. Uh, same here. The first picture was with the dog and, uh, you know, she had no problem picking up a dog and photographing it. And the rest was just 
I'd love to get a photograph of you along. I love her. Her mask says, uh, tofu never caused a pandemic. And these are some of the things that you look at uh, that make life a little bit easier to uh, to deal with. Any questions, uh, Paige? Not yet, nope. Okay, good. Um, this is probably one of my favorite ways to photograph. And it is by taking the camera off my eye. Um, it makes for very, very um, true, uh, true candidates where people really are not aware that you're taking their picture because the camera's not up by your eye. It is either around my waist or sometimes it's even lower than that. It takes a little bit of practice to understand how your, how your lens works um, and also how to set your camera uh, to the proper exposure and also uh, proper um, focus. With, with manual focus, it's wonderful because your camera's not fooled into photographing, I'm sorry, uh, focusing on something that is going to miss your target. In other words, just uh, miss that and go out into the background. So for me, usually six feet, seven feet, manual focus. I've already tested my exposure, so I have an idea of where I want to be. And then I just wait for my subject to come into, uh, into the view. I have a word there that says reasonable focus. There are times that you may miss it. You may not be tax shock, shock, but it's really not all about being tax sharp. Sometimes it's about telling the story. So don't be too, uh, too concerned about it. Uh, everything has to be tax sharp. There are times when we do want to tax shop, but there are other times that you can kind of get away with that. And Jim, you have a, uh, two questions about the lens. Yeah. Um, are you working with a long lens? And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about a different lens that's coming right up. And it's a great question. Um, I've changed my photography quite a bit in the last, I would say, two years, um, where I'm more into the, uh, a wider angle fixed lens, mirrorless. I'm using a Fuji, um, the X100F. And it is just an awesome, Awesome camera. And I'm, I'm going to tell you the difference between wide angle and, and, and uh, telephoto. Uh, and there's a this pluses for both. Uh, so when I said about reasonable focus, there are times you cannot get a tax shop uh, image and it's OK. I think it's more about uh, the story, the motion, um, the ambience and all the other things that go along with it. Uh, it's hard to tell the picture on the left is not tax, tax shop, but I just love the interaction. Um, and the story that it tells. So I was okay with that. And of course, uh, there are other ways to uh, um, control your focus. Panning is, is an awesome way of doing it. It's, it's a great way to separate your main subject from the background. I think I have uh, another one. Yep, yeah, here's a, a good example here. Um, Here's, here's a very busy intersection and the background is, is pretty busy, but if you pan, you can actually just make that background go into, uh, into a beautiful uh, uh, bokeh or movement and it really gives you a great separation. And now you can concentrate on the, on the actual subject itself. And we have actually one more question. Um sure. Just going back a little bit, do you offer to send copies of prints to the people that you're photographing? Yes, that's a, that's a great question. I carry along with me uh, my business card, which has uh, printed images. We'll talk about prints later, and you should be getting your prints, uh, yeah, your images out on prints. But I do carry my card. They have all kinds of different images of my street photography. Sometimes people may come up to me and say, why? What do you want to do? I pull out a card and say, I'm documenting, you know, life and what's going on here. I find you very interesting, and, uh, and I would love to take your photograph. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, most of the times they will not have a problem. This image here is taken without, you know, much knowledge here. This is very quick. This is shot from the hip. She is not tax sharp, but I just love the story. It almost reminds me of uh, like a, an Audrey Hepburn type of feel. Um, and here's a great uh, trick 
and just don't tell anybody I told you, but here's a great trick. Uh, when an image is a little bit out of focus, the way you can help make it look more in focus is guess what? Make the background a little more out of focus. And that's what I did here. So I select the background, bring it, you know, maybe a Gaussian blur, whatever I'm doing, make it a little more out of focus. And it brings, guess what? It brings more attention to your main subject, which is a great, a uh, great way to fool your viewers. Uh, once again, uh, uh, a little movement. You have this young kid coming across the street. This movement, I love it because it shows every day the, the real deal of people uh, in, in everyday life situations. Um, also, uh, if people are moving towards you, your shutter speed can, can, does not have to be. Uh, 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 it, if it's a little bit slower than normal, you still can get away with it because they're not moving away from the camera sideways. They're moving towards you. So you can get away with a, um, a little bit of a lower shutter speed. Uh, I, I love this one, too, for a, a couple of different reasons. Uh, it's not tax sharp. But the first thing that drew me to the image was the uh, the street walk. Herself. So street photography, I think one of the main things you need to do is try to understand a little bit about making a, making a photograph. This young lady walking into this store and guess what? She's got to come out someday. And so I remember her going in. And I remember it would be a real nice compliment to this uh, mannequin that's coming out of, uh, it's okay, nobody knows. Um, I just told you that, but it could have been just standing there and all of a sudden I caught it. So use all, you know, every, every, everything that you can use in your, in your arsenal. And Jim, um, just where it says event webinar, Jim, in the bottom and it says stop sharing, can you just hit the hide button? Yes. Thank you. That's uh, can I get to it? I can't get to it unless I get out of this. So should I do uh, that? Um, I think you should just keep going. OK, and I, I'm sorry. Hopefully you can see everything else that's in there. Yeah, we can. OK, the size of moments is is um, is true. Candid photography, long lenses, which are great especially for people that maybe just sell a photo lens, you can be back 15, 20 feet and you can get a, an awesome image without anybody even knowing. Um, I've gone a little bit further than that. I'm going to show you, uh, uh, you got to have a little more guts uh, when you start shooting uh, wide angles. Uh, to the size of moments again, I'm, I'm here on the right hand side photographing or making like I'm photographing the door because I see this gentleman walking down the street. So my job is to get my exposure, get my, my focus, get everything ready. And all I'm waiting for is this gentleman to actually walk into the, uh, into that doorway. So he's separated from everything. And is he really happy? I, I, I don't know how happy he is, but it was a uh, click of the shutter and we moved on. And that makes for an uh, interesting picture, too. And I'm going to talk about everything not being so rosy. Uh, the gentleman on the left, I was really happy. Um, I was photographing quite a few people walking through this area. And I was lucky enough to just uh, grab this gentleman uh, uh, bouncing the basketball. And it, and it kind of the timing was just on the money. This one was probably one of the easiest ones. Um, I mentioned it before. I love this. Uh, uh, you'll see some from Haiti, but you can't you can't plan this. You just got to be there. And I love the lamppost and I knew it would be a good subject. It may not be the, the main subject, but I think it would be a, a good secondary part of the subject. So my job was to find out what would work uh, uh, to complement that. So coming back late from shooting in this particular area, it was getting dark and I had photographed the image without anybody there. I wanted to see what it looked like. I wanted to see what kind of lighting we have and waited a little bit. And I was lucky enough to get the gentleman walking through with his dog and just strictly lit by uh, available light. Um, talking about available light, and, and this is going to be a little bit ironic, uh, I, I shoot strictly without a flash but i guess my headshot showed a flash on a camera let me explain that uh, i was at a friend's wedding 
and it's not my camera, but she wanted to take a picture of me. I really liked it, so I kept it in there. But um, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I leave my flash in my bag, but it adds a little interest to the to the image. And I, I have been in this in this spot many times and trying to figure out what would make for an interest. Um, anybody has any questions on that? Again, you can contact me anytime. Uh, but, you know, the longer the lens, the wider the aperture, the shorter your depth of field. If you're looking to separate your image and getting a nice bokeh in the background, that is the lens to go with. And again, once again, it's a little safety net for, for somebody that might be um, not that comfortable uh, getting uh, closer to, a, to your subject. Here's one that you can see is very, very uh, beautiful bokeh. Um, I continued to leave. I could have cropped it out. I wanted to leave the uh, the subject in the right hand corner. It gives balance, it, and it also gives depth into the image. So there's a lot of things I think about when I'm photographing out, uh, out in the street. Uh, same here. Uh, when we talk about uh, fast fast lenses. Those lens, lenses are the ones that open up uh, to a very wide aperture, uh, 1.8. Fuji just came out with a, uh, um, a 50 millimeter lens that's 1.0. Oh, my gosh. And maybe someday I'm going to need it. Uh, it's, it's a little tricky. And, you know, you open very wide, your focus point becomes very, very shallow. Uh, having a very wide lens, uh, for me, I want to use that that very wide lens. I want to blow out the background. Some of the cons against this is uh, these very uh, fast lenses are bigger, they're heavier, and guess what? They're more expensive. So I guess you can, you can weigh that out a little bit. Here's a couple more examples of just blowing the background out and really gearing in on, on the subject. So, uh, this is something that I've been uh, shooting much more. Uh, wide angles are great for environmental portraits and landscapes. It, can, it helps to tell more of a story. I mean, you can photograph somebody with uh, uh, a telephoto lens and it's a great uh, portrait of somebody's face. But if you want to try and tell a bit more of a story, um, a wide angle can help you do that. Uh, here's another one, uh, just stop action. It almost uh, gives me a European, a European feeling, even though it's right here in uh, Pennsylvania. But just uh, when you're photographing, also keep in mind uh, compositions and things like that. You know, you want to make sure that you use all the elements that make for um, a, a more powerful um, capture, you know, you don't have to keep them in the center. Try to keep them in a PowerPoint. This happens to be more on the left-hand side. You have a nice leading line coming in, and uh, it's just a, a pleasant uh, photograph. Can you do portraits with a wide-angle lens? You certainly can. Um, do you have to get closer to somebody? Yes, you do. But you can do it. Uh, if you're worried about distortion, you want to try to keep your subject more or less in the middle of your of your wide angle lens that'll help eliminate some of that uh, distortion. The gentleman on the right, what's really nice about uh, you know showing a little bit more of the story is we can see the type of work that the, this gentleman is doing, but we can also see where he's working, um, which is really important in telling the story. We can, um, for those that may not know, this is uh, Philadelphia, which is a it's an awesome city to photograph. I love the city. I was telling Paige that people say you're crazy. You get into Manhattan, go to the city. Um, this everybody's running around like crazy, although not right this now. But um, I like the adrenaline. I like the nonstop of photography. I love the people. It's not you know, like I said, it's just nonstop uh, come and go, and there's so many things to photograph there. So uh, don't be afraid to get in there and and uh, challenge the big city. A, a few more examples. Um, you can't make this stuff. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, here's a young woman that uh, I'm going to assume is a model, and I, I stopped her. I, not that I stopped her. I probably ran her down and asked her. I'd love to take her photograph. 
Um, not to be a stalker, but I needed to take that. And the, the crazy redhead and uh, red hair and, and just the beautiful uh, rest of the storytelling, people uh, movement in the streets. It makes for a great, uh, even though it's a coast candidate, it still makes for uh, almost a nice candidate itself. So, are you afraid? Don't be. It can be, like I said, very daunting. And some people say it's just too nerve wracking. Um, you know what? Pick up a camera. They see cameras. They see what you're doing. They kind of even know you're a photographer. So get an idea of what the subject might be doing. Are they smiling? Are they frowning? Are they yelling? These are all the things that are kind of giveaways of, of what your next move can be. So I'm very aware of my subjects and uh, the feedback I get from them. And if I really feel that it's going to be a problem, then guess what? Just uh, get out of there and look for somebody else. Uh, uh, image on the left, wide angle. Image on the right, uh, telephoto lens. Uh, quite a different feel. Uh, getting close. It's okay. Tell the story. Um, this gentleman I found in front of a uh, cigar shop. And let me tell you, they love to have their picture taken because that's what they do. They're, they just want to puff away. You can see the smoke coming out of his mouth and it, and it makes for a, a very dynamic image. Any questions, uh, Paige? Um, earlier in the presentation, some people were asking about release forms. Do you ever have um, models or anyone on the street signing any type of release form that you can maybe use the image later in magazines or on your website? I do. And um, I mentioned uh, there's an app called Easy Release. Uh, that's one of the things you can do. And that's something that they could, uh, they could sign right there. And a lot of times when I do not get a model release, um, what I do is, of course, I give them my card. I never ask them for their email address because I don't want to feel like I'm, in, you know, imposing or, or prying. I say I would love to. I would love to uh, share this image with you. I give them my card, and you know, I would say, you know, 80% of those people will will uh, email me back, and that is another time where I can get permission for them uh, to uh, use it for my portfolio or put it on the uh, a web or, or doing what we're doing right now. So that's that's a great question. And I know some people are having trouble with um, the screen freezing. Uh, this will be recorded, and we're going to send out an email um, when the recording is available, so you can definitely watch it then. That's great. Uh, we apologize for that. Um, I'm having no problems on my end, so which is a good thing. But please, uh, yeah, uh, come check us out uh, after, after the um, presentation and, and watch it again. And feel free to ask questions um, when this is posted on YouTube, and we can always answer the questions through uh, the comments on YouTube as well. That's that's fine. Um, so this here, uh, you know, when you're when you're out there, what I like to do is is really uh, photograph things that uh, t tell us a little bit about life and what's going on. Um, it could be about emotions. It could be just about the uh, an insight of what you see and what you feel. This obviously is a very important topic. Um, if, if I had to uh, title this, it would probably be silenced. And unfortunately, this is what we're seeing so much now. Uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy going on. Uh, these young kids were, uh, were eating pizza and they're actually were facing the other way. And the sun was hitting some of them and shower on the other. And the only thing I asked them to do was uh, come on the other side. I'd rather have the sun behind them. So at least their faces would be OK. We got blown out a little bit in the background, but it's OK. They're backlit and and it's a very intense photograph for me. Um, there is there's one subject in here that I would love to photograph. I, I, um, I haven't had a chance to speak with him, but the gentleman on the bottom right, his eyes are just uh, phenomenal. And these are some of the things that you, that you look for. Keep them relaxed. Don't don't fuss. No must. Just get in there and, and just say, get in there, get together and let it and let it happen. And this is it. I mean, 
there is no way you can go on a uh, uh, either a campus or uh, find out where kids are, you know, these kids are hanging out, ask them for a photograph. I never had one turn me down. Uh, very simple. Hey, kids, get together. And the rest is history. They just do their own thing. And again, uh, no preparation. Just get in there and, and capture those happy faces. Um, I'm telling you stories because that's a big part of street photography. It's it's not only what I'm trying to uh, share with the viewer, uh, but there's there's crazy stories behind it for me, and that's what makes it important. And that's what's going to happen with you when you go out there photographing. You're going to have a story as well. Um, uh, the the young woman on the left hand side uh, is from Manhattan. And not to once again, not to be a stalker, but I did chase her down. I didn't run right up to her, but I ran across the street where she was. I walked down the street further away from her, knowing that she was walking in that direction. And I waited for her to come closer to me. So it didn't look like I was just like, you know, freaking out, trying to grab her and, and uh, really impose on her. She's a model. So the first thing I asked her was, uh, you know, what kind of modeling she does. And she told me she works in the theater. And so I said, I guess you must be going to work. And she said, no, she's going to the movie house to watch a movie. And to prove that to me, she opened up her pocketbook. And in there is a bag full of popcorn. So, you know what? This is the stuff you, you, you know, you can't make up. And it makes a big part of the story. The gentleman on the right who lives in Manhattan as you can see, my camera angle is extremely low because this is what he's used to, uh, high rises and the big buildings of Manhattan. And it helped to tell his story. And that's and that's the reason why I took that position. Jim, uh, do you ever use flash um, with these images? Never. Uh, no flash. Everything is naturally lit. Um, I try to use uh, um, if I'm moving somebody around like I like I had said on that last image of those young kids at the pizza parlor. Um, I did move them around so I could get better lighting on their faces without using flash. I do not use flash in any of my photography. It's just um, it it it's an extra piece of equipment. But more more than that, it, I think it's more intrusive and uh, it it's um, it doesn't it doesn't separate me from from uh, trying to be a little more in the background. I I don't want anything else to be able to spoil the spontaneity. Of, of uh bringing in a flash and and spoiling that and not only that some people are really really good at using a flash and balancing it i'm terrible because it's something that um i just didn't get interested in doing so that's why i try to really uh you know study uh natural lighting and dan is asking um your favorite lens or which one you use most often okay so when i'm shooting with uh, a telephoto lens it would be the 70 to 200 28 on my nikon i have an older nikon which is the uh the uh, d uh the ds3 which is a much it's a pretty old uh camera but what is so amazing about that that particular uh piece of equipment is the iso is phenomenal I do not have a problem shooting high ISOs, and, and I'm going to show you a few images. Um, so it's a wonderful camera. Uh, but lately, uh, the image on the right is a Fuji, the X, uh, uh, X100F. It's a fixed lens, which is a 23 millimeter lens, which uh, relates to a 35 millimeter lens in the uh, 35 millimeter world, or a full frame world, I should say. Um, uh, if I if I can, if you guys are going out, uh, once you get a little bit more used to photographing out in the street, one of the things I would say, and, and this is what I do, I did even when I had two when I used to go out with two cameras. I do that uh, rarely now, but now I'm I've been shooting more with the, just a smaller camera because I'm old and it's a lot easier for me. But if you're going out, you start getting comfortable. I would suggest go out there with just one lens. Because it forces you to move. In other words, if, if you're using a, a wide angle, it forces you to get into position for that for that great shot. It's not where you can be far away and shoot it. So, and the same thing with a telephoto lens. If you're going out, if it's a zoom lens, set it to one particular millimeter and just use that uh, because it again, it, it's a good 
um, way of you understanding where you need to be. Not only, not only, not always just zooming in and out. So it's it's a good exercise for everybody. Okay. Wow. You know what? Uh, for me, this is uh, extremely powerful, and it's two different images, uh, two different feelings. But is it? Is it really two different feelings? And let me tell you my story on this one. It's not. I see two very similar images. I have the gentleman on the left, uh, unfortunately, uh, out in the street, and he's pushing his uh, uh, shopping cart probably with many of his worldly positions, uh, possessions. I'm sorry. And we have a gentleman on the right hand side. Guess what he's doing? I am sure he's walking with one of his pride possessions as well. So there is a little bit of irony in these two images. And that's the way I see the story. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to put this, uh, these two images together. It, it really speaks a lot to me, uh, even though they're in different worlds, there's a lot of similarities. A couple more examples of, of catching people uh, strictly uh, candid. Look for uh, uh, dynamic lighting. Uh, uh, look for expressions and movement. Any questions, uh, Paige? Um, someone's asking, using a wide angle lens, um, you never need to focus, right? In the hyperfocal? Uh, uh, yes, that's very co that's correct, and I had mentioned that uh, uh, there are some cameras the uh, that have the sensor where they can grab an eye. For me, it really doesn't work that well on wide angle. It works wonderful when you got more of a telephoto lens or a normal lens. So for me, I'd rather uh, hyperfocal uh, get it. You know, maybe between six and seven feet. I'm usually set around five six maybe eight, depending on where my, uh, you know, where I want my shutter speed to be. I don't have a problem moving up the ISO if it needs to be higher. And then I know that when I press that shutter, uh, it's not going to be influenced by anything else. It's not going to, you know, search. It's not going to go in and out looking for uh, a focus point. It's just going to, it's going to fire. Um, and I, and, uh, and, and that's what I use. So yes, hyperfocal length works really very nicely with, um, wide angles. It takes a little practice and you may get discouraged because <laughs> you may be pointing the camera and you're going to get a picture of the sky. Um, I've done that and it's, it, it's not unusual. You learn where, where you, where you're going to be pointing. So just continue to uh, give it a try. And also, is there a time of day that you like to shoot? Yes. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but for the most part, when I'm shooting people, um, because I don't use natural light, uh, I use natural light. I'm usually looking for more subdued light, um, but I don't discount shooting out in the uh, in, in sunny days. And I'm going to share that with you as well. You can't make it up, guys. It's there. There are pictures out there that just will blow your mind. Being there, I guess, would be the only thing I can tell you. Um, what I really like about uh, I mean, they're all uh, very storytelling, but if you look at the one on the bottom right, you have a woman holding her hands over this guy's eyes as these two women pass with, you know, I guess they're wearing, uh, short, you know, kind of short shorts. So it's a great uh, uh, secondary subject that that really, really helps the uh, the main part of the subject. The young, young couple on the top, uh, I met, uh, they were homeless, traveling across the country, um, even traveling with their cat. So it, it, it has a great story behind it as well. The one on the left is somebody that I saw in Manhattan by Flatiron Building um, doing her thing. And uh, she was imposing for me, but you know what? I decided it was a great shot from a different angle. And again, sharing what is happening out on the streets today. Uh, one thing that's never gonna change cell phones and no matter what you do it's always the same people are glued to them um i do a program on a uh that is called uh, cell block and you can take that in many ways uh that where uh, minds are blocked from everything else 
Uh, cell block could be in jail because we are we are locked up with our with our uh, iPhones and and um, all our phones. So I spent a, I spent a day just photographing people. This uh, photo you know photographing people just with their phones, and it's pretty amazing what you can get. You can get all kinds of cool cool stuff. I think I think in street photography, your background can be just as important as the main subject. Um, here is something what I would consider. Um, how would I call this? Uh, being an uh, being more of an observer. There's different kinds of photographers. Uh, this would be considered an observer. So I I'm in a spot that I think would make for a, a cool image. Once again, I'm all ready for exposure. I'm all ready for uh, focus. And the only thing I need to do is just hang out. I'm in the city. There's going to be people walking back and forth. And once again, I, I feel that this picture speaks uh, volumes. Uh, this, the size of the cat and the size of the dog is, is very alluring and, and, and it's, it's, it's a fun image. And not not far after that, or just a few minutes later, same cat, and really lucky. If you look at the bag the woman is is carrying, it says all you need is anchovies, and that is something that uh, I could never ask for, and it and it fit perfectly within this image as well. Kid from Brooklyn. I grew up in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Coney Island was a place that I that I visited many, many times. So this this building, which was in uh, Maryland, um, really interests me. Uh, not only because it said Coney Island, but I, I just I just love uh, uh, the old the old look that it has. It's a diner, and uh, I, I was visiting a good friend of mine uh, out in, Ma in Maryland, uh, uh, Les Picker, who was another. Uh, Moab master and I thank him for having me out there and this is one of the places that I visited and uh, what also interested me about this image was this mural that's on the side of the building it is crazy and beautiful so after photographing this and documenting that um, I went inside and talked to some of the people there and I actually ended up talking to, to one of the waitresses there and uh, she came out on a break and asked her if I could take a uh, uh, a quick uh, photograph of her and I put her into her elements. It may not mean a lot to other people, uh, but to her, it's, it's really, really special because this is the place where, you know, she's making a living and she's very familiar with. So uh, uh, supporting elements uh, can really add to the, uh, to your imagery. Same thing here, a little patience. Um, I saw these billboards that, that were up there, and I thought this would make uh, for a very interesting uh, capture. Love this one, too. Uh, right place, right time. Uh, she was walking all over the place. Finally, she ended up between these two people yelling and screaming or laughing, and her holding her ears because she can't hear uh, really seals the deal. So being on the street is really about the uh, storytelling. Um, and there are a lot of different elements that you can include to tell that story. You know, I just mentioned a little bit about background. Uh, composition is very important. Just because we're out in the street doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we should uh, forget some of these other things that really help uh, make your images stronger. Um, and of course, another thing that's not up there is lighting. Lighting is, of course, without it, we have nothing. So be be really conscious of uh, what your what your lighting is doing. Is it backlighting them? If it is, be uh, be prepared to be able to adjust your camera uh, settings. Is it is it side lighting that's going to really bring out a lot of texture? Um, there's so many things that you, you need to think about uh, when you're photographing. Sometimes you have the time to to do that, and sometimes you don't. But I think the biggest part of being on the street is being able to tell a story. Uh, uh, once again, the only thing that's lighting this uh, this uh, image is a street light, and you can see it right right to the left there. That is lighting. It's this is dark. Uh, this is probably about eight or nine o'clock um, by a cigar store. 
and uh, only naturally lit by light. Um, you can see a lot of my images are, are black and white. People ask me about uh, how do I how do I control color management, and if I have a problem with the color, I turn it black and white. That's my color management. So um, you you can experiment with uh, with color, and I do a lot. If it doesn't seem to work for you, guess what? Black and white is a great way to go to help you out. Uh, repeating elements can be very, very strong in telling the story, be it people or it, it could be uh, shapes. Um, it could be, uh, you know, uh, a circular part of a staircase, just kind of repeating. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all these things can help uh, bring your, your uh, viewers' eyes into where you want to go. And here, a little bit lucky, the only thing I did was just move, move my camera angle over enough where I can include a gentleman in the background with a very, very similar pose. And we have a leading line coming from the bottom left, up his leg, right into the subject, and it moves right, right into the secondary part of the image. So these are some of the things you can think about. Jim, someone is asking on how much planning you do in advance or do you just roam and how long do you typically go out for? Um, that's really, that's another good question. I typically do not look for, uh, for a secondary subjects. Um, and I'm going to talk about it. Uh, uh, another photographer uh, term would be the hunter. If you have a specific thing that you want to go out and photograph, by all means, you can do that. For me, um, I'm pretty... Uh, kind of a wing it kind of guy. And if I'm out, say in the city, um, I get about 12 calls from my wife, where are you? So I do spend many hours in the street and many miles. You know, I can, I, I can walk from Madison Square Garden all the way down to the, uh, to the um, village, which is several miles because there is nonstop photography to be had. So I will spend if, you know, if I live in New Jersey, Flemington, New Jersey. So if I'm going to make a trip into Philly or into uh, Manhattan, I am there for the day. Uh, so you're talking about, you know, 10 hours. So get ready, take your stuff out there um, and get ready to spend the day shooting. Photographing the younger, younger generation. This could be a very sensitive uh, uh, type of people to photograph, especially now we all know how delicate uh, this could be. Um, different age groups might be a little bit easier, um, just like this one, these teenagers. I had been photographing them a little bit uh, skateboarding on the street. And finally, I uh, uh, got them together and said, I just love to grab a shot. Very simple. You can see that it's not posed. As a matter of fact, one of the one of the kids are not even looking at the camera. It doesn't bother me because it's about the story and not really about perfection for me. Um, it's really funny because uh, I love this area. Uh, I think a year later I went back there and actually ran into a, one or two of these, and the kid remembered me. You got you took my picture in the in the city uh, one time, and I said yes. So it's really funny how. Uh, you can build up relationships even even though it's from you know many miles away. So here here you can see I'm using a telephoto lens photographing uh, photographing these young kids, uh, trying to capture capture some uh, action reaction. Um, there's lots of cool stuff out there. Just um, common sense. I'm going to talk about that in one second. I'm photographing younger kids. Uh, now and then, uh, for, mo for the most part, uh, uh, children do like to be photographed, uh, especially at this age, uh, hanging out with their friends, uh, giving them your card and, and saying, you know, they love to have it, share it on their, you know, on their Facebook, on Instagram. Very easy subject to photograph. Um, the Fuji camera that I use, it's pretty incredible. The one on the right, you can see it's backlit and the uh, tonat, tonat tonal uh, value of this camera is just crazy. I'm able to get a uh, great, uh, um, uh, you know, a great information from both the, uh, the dark and the light areas. So it's, it's, a, it's a very cool camera. Uh, as they get younger, you have to be more concerned. 
Um, I stood in this spot for a few minutes, walking back and forth because I knew it's a, an image that I wanted to capture. And I probably took about three images. This image is shot not from eye level. This is shot probably from waist level. I have my camera around my neck. So I don't want to bring too much attention to me. Um, the parent, and I, I'm going to assume the grandparents did turn around and look at me a couple of times. And I continued to kind of just hang out to see what the response would be. And finally, um, I, I got this um, eye contact from this little one that, that actually sealed the deal for me. And that's the image I took about two or three, I think. And this is the image that I, that I thought was the more powerful. And uh, just for a, a little fun, in the back there, there's a, a little sign that says life without coffee is Dispresso. It is a coffee shop and and a, uh, ice cream shop. So I thought that was uh, kind of uh, humorous. Here was um, a, a happy accident. I saw this young lady on the right walking. By the way, they're both the same person. The young lady was on the right. I was sitting on a bench and very quickly grabbed the shot, which I love because it's that look into into the camera. She's she's wearing a mask that says uh, good vibes. And about 20 minutes later, not realizing it was the same young lady coming back from the from the uh, ice cream shop. I saw her and the first thing I, uh, she was dressed beautifully, as you can see. Um, I asked her mom, I would just love to take a photograph. Would you mind? I would send, you know, I gave her my card. I said, I would uh, I'll send you a photograph of her. And the mother was like, yes, yes, yes. And the first shot she wanted was she kept telling her to put the ice cream down. And I, you know, so would take one for mom. And then I said, now we need one for uh, what I think the story would complete. And that's her smiling face licking the ice cream. So that's what we ended up with. Once again, uh, kids uh, having a good time. This area is another great place to photograph. This is in Philly. I've seen parents there. They see me. They know what I'm doing. They know I'm a photographer. I'm trying to get uh, vibes, making sure that nobody's uh, out of, you know, bent out of shape. Uh, everybody's happy. Everybody's having a good time. Um, finally, uh, parents might come over to me. Uh, if you, uh, did you get anything? I give them my card, and that's most most of the times the way I interact with them. Okay, so I'm going to add a little uh, mystique, which is so simple that it's really maybe not mysterious. But how do you photograph children, especially young like this? This takes a lot of nerve, uh, although it's a it's a telephoto lens. Am I on top of her? I'm pretty close to her. So people ask me, what about what's going on? Aren't their parents really nervous? Well, if if I really have a problem photographing her, the best thing, the next best thing to do is photograph the parent. And that's what I do. I talk to the parent. Oh, this woman was beautiful. I love to, you know, can I get a, a picture of you? I'd love to. Your daughter, you know, she's beautiful. And before you know it, I'm able to photograph the children as well. So sometimes you got to use a little ingenuity, but it's out there. Don't be afraid. Uh, uh, Paige, am I doing okay on time? Yeah, keep okay. going. Okay, good, good. Uh, some more examples of photographing children or uh, younger adults. Um, they make for great, great subjects. Yes, so the uh, a, a candid approach, if, you, if you're, again, um, a purist and you just want to capture people without them knowing, then by all means, I think it's a great way to photograph. And, uh, and I do lots of it. But once again, I like to incorporate other things as well. So, you know, get yourself in a position um, uh, you can see lower camera angles. Uh, don't be afraid to take the camera off your eye uh, if you need to uh, kneel down. Uh, dogs are a really good subject. They think you're photographing the dog, but guess what? If you've got a wide enough lens, uh, you're photographing a lot more than that. Love this image. Just uh, obviously strictly, uh, strictly candid. Um, a longer lens and just capturing life um, the way it is. Here we have Coke scans, which can be very, very powerful. Um, the image on the right, I took twice. The first one, they were both looking down at their cameras, uh, uh, 
at their phones and there was a gentleman in the background which really didn't bother me but once they saw me photographing them the next shot was her taking a picture of me and both looking at the camera so it made for a more interesting uh, image woman on the left was just a wonderful wonderful woman as you can see wide angle um, once again, I do not have a problem uh, doing portraits with a wide angle. Great story. Get in there. Photograph them. They love it. Don't be afraid. Uh, once again, uh, look at the size of that dog, uh, Mama Duke. Um, it reminds me of a very, very old, old photograph from uh, years ago. But uh, you can see the gentleman was more than happy to uh, be photographed. Um this is a uh, wide angle. Uh, I, besides some of the things I'm going to show you from Haiti, this is probably a very, a very uh, favorite portrait uh, or photograph of mine, I should say. Do we need faces? Not all the time. And it's, it's really weird. Uh, this is New York City. This is probably one of the most uh, busiest streets in the city. This is uh, Theater Row. Um, you may not see too many people here. Um, this couple just came out of uh, the theater, but I don't care how many people are on the street. This image to me is uh, very personal and, and it's very intimate because it shows you a couple that are extremely close to each other. You notice a low camera angle that kind of adds a little bit of a dynamic tension to this image. And, and I just love it. It, it like I said, it, it's, it's so intimate. Um, and it means, and it means a lot to me. <clears throat> and Jim, we have a question. Um, so when you have these candid shots, how do you get the model, model release forms or any release forms? Do you have to run after them or if their well, face isn't in it? Does right. It uh, well, uh, obviously this one right here, you do not need a model release. There's no face that is recognizable. So I don't, I don't worry about that. The ones that you can recognize, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can recognize by all means. If you can, I would suggest getting a model release. Is it always possible? No, because sometimes uh, it's so quick they're in and out, and um, but they are they are on public street, and you can photograph them. I know that sometimes you think you're invading somebody's space. Uh, but legally, you can do it. Uh, you can photograph a cop. You can photograph a child. But once again, please have respect and use common sense. Don't do something that, that you feel is, is just not right. Okay? Um, the Pied Piper of Pigeons. Like, once again, we can't see the person's face, but it makes for a, a pretty dynamic image. Uh, one of the ways when we talk about composition and, and storytelling and how we bring the views, viewer's eyes into the image and how we force them to go where we want to, are there are many ways. In, in this particular case, we're using contrast, we're using dark against light, and, uh, and we're also using leading lines, which happens to be the pitches in this case. Uh, leading you right up to the subject a lot. This is in Coney Island, one of my favorite places to photograph. Um, again, just love the image. From behind, there are stories to be told. It's okay. You don't always need to, uh, you know, capture faces. A couple of more examples. I love the bulldog and this guy with his, uh, his football jersey on. Tell, tells a great story. Okay, so another type of ph photographer would be the one a photographer that would engage with their subjects. <clears throat> um, it can bring you a lot of great opportunities. It really can. This this uh, place, uh, this town is known for bikers and a great place to hang out and photograph people that, believe it or not, love to be photographed. She's got a peace sign up as she as they're riding by, and uh, they're looking coming into the shop. I follow them after. I stalked them after, after they, uh, after they uh, parked, and I asked them, I'd love to get just a regular portrait of you guys, and they were more than happy to do it. No planning. Um, I'm not worried about uh, perfect uh, lighting. I'm not worried about perfect uh, facing the camera, facial uh, you know, uh, positions. I'm just looking uh, to, fo uh, to capture uh, the couple themselves. Um, here's... Um, the strict candidate coming in on the street. And the reason I wanted to show you that is uh, when I talked about um, engaging with your subjects, right after that, guess what? 
I was able to photograph her to my heart's content. Um, another model going to work, and I asked her um, if I could photograph just to take a couple of shots. Uh, we were under an overhang. They were they were building construction, made, and that makes for beautiful light, as we know. If uh, we can get our subjects under a uh, an area that's covering the, the top, we we can force natural light coming in uh, through the sides. Makes for awesome, awesome light. No flash. And as I said before, really try to keep it simple. I I try not to uh, tell people uh, move your head, do this. I just want them to be themselves. Um, the only the only thing that I did with the image on the left was move my own body, to move it over so I can separate him from trees and that lamp and just put him in a position that would be more uh, would be a stronger composition. But leave him alone, let him do his thing. And that's the way I, I like to handle uh, doing doing these Coke candidates. Same same thing here. Um, very relaxed kids doing their own thing. They love it. And just a natural, natural smile. Guess what? If if you're really afraid to get out there, um, people are going to know it, and they may either get turned off or they may not give you what you want. So you know what? Uh, get out there, play a little bit, uh, build up some confidence. This is a strictly candid shot. I was happy with it, but I, but I really thought I can get something more powerful than this. So right after this, I asked them for a quick shot together, and we ended up with this. And this, to me, tells a, a much uh, stronger story than uh, just them walking down the street. Very powerful uh, 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 the story that's being told today uh, with the masks and eye-to-eye -eye contact, extremely, extremely strong. Same here. Remember that Wawa story about the going to the store and finding people? Well, guess what? Once again, I got my coffee, went out, I saw this guy, and you know what? He was more than happy to have his uh, photograph taken. Strange story, same place, different time. The one on the left was taken in the winter, and the one on the right a couple of weeks ago went down to this area and photographed the owner. I never thought that uh, the, uh, it would be this type of owner that owned this store, but you know, you never know. It's all good. Um, she doesn't. She may not look too happy, but that is her. Um, I asked her if I can take a photograph and I would send her a picture. And she said, I know what I look like. So I thought uh, this could be a problem. But you know what? I stuck around a little bit more. And uh, before you knew it, she said, go ahead, take my picture. Very relaxed. That's the way she was. And it, um, and it tells a great story. So do I only go out on overcast days? No. This is a sunny days. So go ahead out there. There's things out there to be photographed. There could be people, um, but it could be uh, really more abstract kind of things, uh, things that have texture, things that have tonal value, as, as you can see here. There are great things to photograph on, on days that, uh, unfortunately, you may not want to photograph people. Um, straight in, just using the sun, using texture, to uh, uh, highlight your, your, your images, uh, giving uh, uh, architectural uh, detail is just a, the perfect day to do that. Um, hopefully I can share a little uh, uh, print with you later. By the way, I do a lot of printing and I hope you guys are doing the same. Um, I don't know if you may think I use Moab and I do. And they have a lot of great papers uh, from uh, from a rag type of uh, mat, uh, mat papers to specialty papers. Uh, this image particularly will print wonderfully on a metallic type paper, and hopefully I can share that with you maybe a little bit later. So uh, detail, detail, detail works extremely well. Abstract, get out there, photograph it. When I walk around Manhattan, I look like a tourist. Of course, my head is always up in the sky, you know, just looking around like I've never seen this before, but do it. There's things up there that that'll really uh, make for great, great shots. Um, uh, I talked a little bit about composition and telling the story. Uh, there's once once again a lot of ways of of helping the viewer get there. In this case, uh, it's very contrasty. Uh, light, uh, dark against light, forces you to go exactly where I want you to go. And guess what? There's a great leading line coming from the left. 
right into the subject subject as well. It's not an accident. I, you know, position myself to where I need to be, uh, separate him from the background and and uh, tell the story uh, of a gentleman on the phone and uh, uh, using beautiful uh, leading lines and also great, great shapes. And let's take it a step further. Get out there. Don't be afraid. Get your cameras out there. Uh, you know, you can protect them. If it's not weatherproof, you can protect them in other ways. It, it makes uh, great uh, photography. Here's a couple of shots from Cuba. Um, I was fortunate enough to take, uh, uh, take a group of people from the United States uh, on an educational tour. Um, this day was raining, and I asked everybody, get your cameras, let's go. Well, unfortunately, nobody wanted to go out, so I went out there and spent some time out in the street. It's, uh, it's a great place to capture some awesome images. And, Jim, do you think that people need to be in the image for it to qualify as street photography? Uh, no. And that, and that's why I, I think, and if you're a purist, maybe so. Um, but for me, I, I think there's more, more to the story in the street than just people. Um, although most of my images do have people, um, I also like to include, as you saw, uh, photographs of, uh, the architectural, uh, images, things like that, where they are. Um, also when I'm photographing somebody, I'd like to try to, show a little bit of the environment so it, it has some relationship. So for me, I don't have a problem if there's not a, a, a human being in the subject. I still find, I still feel that it, it's still a, a story about the street and where you are. So don't, you know, it's really a, a personal uh, feeling. If that's what you want to do, um, that's entirely up to you. All right, maybe she's not that happy, but you know, we got the shot and get in and get out. Uh, morning fog, uh, you know, this image probably an hour later was, uh, was so much different. So uh, we just had a couple of foggy days here recently and went out there. You can do it in the daytime, do it at night using uh, street lights. It's kind of cool. I found this to be really uh, appropriate, uh, especially now just no more ball playing and everything is so quiet. And uh, with the COVID upon this, I felt this to be a very uh, significant uh, image to share. Here's something I don't do. And, and it's probably something I probably won't do again. Not that there's nothing, there's something wrong with it. It, it I don't have a lot of interest in photographing in the, in the bike parks or in the skate, skateboard parks. But I just wanted to do something, you know, I was I wanted to get out there. It's not too far off from where I live. And I figured I'd spend the day there and do something that that was a little bit different. So I ended up uh, st staying a couple of hours and photographing these kids uh, doing that thing. So um, if that's something that really interests you, get out there. These images were taken with a fisheye. And um, you may not know that. Uh, well, this one, maybe the top left, you can. Um, boy, if you want to eliminate some some uh, problems with with focus, use a fisheye. It's wonderful. Uh, laying on the ground, pointing straight up. I'm just waiting for them to get into a position. I am hyperfocal length. I'm all set. <clears throat> I'm on uh, continuous uh, firing and just let it let it ride, let it fly, and you can uh, get some crazy images. So shooting when the lights. Go low. Don't stop. Don't put your cameras away. Be it photographing people, landscapes, any of those things. Our technology has come a long way. Um, we can shoot higher ISOs now and capture all those beautiful images, even in, uh, in very dark, dark places. Uh, the image on the left may not look like it was getting it was too dark, but once again, your your camera can really capture uh, a lot, a lot of light. So don't be afraid to experiment. 12,800 ISO. That, I think that was the limit on mine before you go into the extraordinary order, the crazy ISOs. And I was, I didn't go there, but this was the top and it worked fine. Does it have grain? Yeah. Um, let me compare that to grain of ye years ago when we were in analog. I mean, we shot 3,200 speed film and it was grainy and it was nice. It added to the, uh, the whole atmosphere and it was okay. The only thing I can say about grain is there's two kinds, uh, two important grains. One of them is underexposed grain, bad. And the other grain, as long as you got a decent exposure, it works very, very well. 
please try and get your shadows in, uh, uh, get the details in the shadows. Because once you start to bring them up uh, the, the, and there's no information in there, that's when you're really running into some bad looking grain. So I'm, that's real quick. I'm going to stay on that. When you're uh, capturing, uh, trust your histogram. I do. Make sure you got the information in the uh, shadow. Highlights are pretty much recoverable. You don't want to go crazy, but uh, there's a lot of room on your highlights on the highlight side. Another image captured indoors. Uh, again, uh, a favorite uh, Manhattan shot. This was done at 4,000. Uh, I really relied more on the lighting in the back and didn't have a problem putting the subject into a uh, silhouette. So I, I know uh, what we're taking now may seem, maybe not seem that important, but when I look back at some of the older photographers of yesteryear and how important their photography is, um, I think you can relate what we're doing now. We it's a really important job uh, at being a photographer. Don't think that, oh, you know, you're photographing something that, you know, may not be important. But guess what? I think years from now, as, as we move it on to uh, the newer generations, I think uh, there are images to be captured now that will mean so much more in the future. Um, there's, a, there's a very uh, um, historic place here in Flemington uh, where the Houtman trial was was. Um, was taken and they they had reenactments. It was an old hotel that right right now is in in, in shambles, and I I have photographed that throughout the years, and I hope someday, um, you know, uh, they'll be able 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 to see what that uh, hotel looked like before it was all uh, taken down. Coney Island, uh, as I said before, is a place that I love. One of the things I um, that I like to say is sometimes I look for inspiration. Um, and going back to my childhood, believe it or not, uh, gives me a little jolt. There's a lot of memories. Some of them might are good. Some of them maybe not so good. But it is also a place that gives me a lot of adrenaline. And I and I continue to go back there whenever I get a chance. Um, although it's like 50 bucks to drive there now because of tolls. I mean, it's not right. But uh, I, I might have to move there. But if you're looking for inspiration, don't be don't be afraid to uh, think about uh, your childhood and things that uh, that you grew up with. It, it kind of helps it helps me uh, uh, get motivated. Um, an image I took, and I'm sure many of you know what it is, uh, Coppertone Ed. This was a photograph I shot. It was uh, near a train station that I used to get off in Coney Island. And it brings back a really a lot of good memories for me. And every time I look at it, I, uh, I smile. An old diner, again, same thing. So uh, so when I go out in the street, everybody's happy when I photograph them, right? Yeah, everybody's so happy. Well, maybe maybe not everybody. So let me share a couple of things. You know, I, I saw this person and had some eye to eye contact. Well, she looked pretty happy to me. Well, maybe not that happy, but she, you know, she looked like she was okay waiting for a bus. And then I lost eye contact with her and she's kind of uh, looking downwards a little bit. And I said, well... Okay, you know what? I'm going to just take one more shot of her. And there it is. She shared that little, uh, you know, that fickle finger of fate award to me. So was she happy? No. But you know what? It's a, it's a sequence of, of life, everyday life. And captured, moved on. She didn't get met, bent out of shape. And I continued to move on to my next subject. Okay, here's another little pussycat giving me that same kind of thing. Uh, here's a guy with a, one of those Simpson dolls on his motorcycle. How bad could this guy be? After this photograph, I walked up to him and gave him my card. He was a gentleman. Um, you know what? That was his personality right there, and I appreciate him giving it to me. It was awesome. A uh, gentleman on the right was a preacher. Um, he had a few things to say to me, and I don't think it was from the Bible. And uh, But, you know, after it was all said and done, um, I respected him and I said, uh, I said the words, God bless you. And he kind of calmed down a little bit and I went on my way. This was a happy accident. And sh this is shot from my car. You can actually see my, my mirror on the bottom, right? I was waiting for a light. And I, I think him holding the sign in front of his face that quickly kind of helped to make this image stronger for me anyway. It's like a, a faceless uh, faceless uh, person uh, behind that, that sign. 
uh, very powerful. This lady doesn't look too happy, and neither, neither does the dog. But it's okay, because a few seconds later, I talked to her, got a few pictures of her, give them a card, and everybody was very, very happy. Any questions? Yeah, we have a, a bunch of questions. Go ahead. Um, someone was asking how you keep track of the people that you're uh, photographing when they contact you. How do you know who is who? Uh, good question. I use Lightroom. Lightroom is an amazing program, not, not only for uh, you know converting raw files. The main reason I use Lightroom is for the database system that it has. Um, uh, Keywording is extremely important, especially when you start shooting thousands and thousands of images. Um, uh, so when people contact me, obviously, I don't know who they are. If I'm, I don't have a model release, but once they contact me, I, I put that into my database system along, you know, not only their name, but along with where, where it is. Keywords of is it in Philly? Is it uh, do they have a mask on COVID? All these things are really very important. So when you go back into Lightroom, um, you know, I got, you know, 12,000, let's say 12,000 images in my catalog and I, and I type in COVID-19, just those pictures are going to come up in a matter of seconds. So it's a very important tool that I use in my, in my arsenal. Most of my, most of my retouching or post-processing ha happens in, 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 uh, Photoshop. So, um, but that's how I use Lightroom for the most part. What else? Um, where can someone find more of your work? I know that you have a website, jimlasala.com. Is there anywhere else that someone should look to find more of your images? Uh, uh, that's a good place to, uh, to start. I, I am working on a new website because I've had, um, I'm a photographer and, and, and unfortunately I'm not a person that loves to uh, get into, uh, you know, working on sites and stuff like that. But, um, I've been, uh, lacking in that department. So please hang in there with me. Um, I have plenty of images uh, to share, of course, personally, but I'm working on put my, uh, putting some new images on our website, so be patient. And uh, if you have any questions, like I said before, contact me and I can sh uh, we can share anything you, uh, you need to, to see. And then another question was, where's, um, where's the market for this work? What do you do with this work after? Okay, so um, I, I've done several uh, galleries. Um, it, Depending on your, your subject, obviously uh, a picture of this cop on the right-hand side is not something that uh, you know I'm gonna go out to sell to people. Uh, so uh, galleries are one thing, uh, books are another thing. I'm, wor I'm working on putting a book together, especially about Haiti. Um, and uh, now um, I start, believe it or not, I, I mean, I've sold uh, pictures of Haiti. Uh, faces, uh, donations really help. I know what giving it away, but giving away, uh, donating uh, images can also lead to sales as well. So there's a lot of avenues to go to go look for. Um, but the main thing is for you guys that are not printing your images, it's a no-brainer. Let's get it out on print first. There's too many people that don't want to take it off their computers. Please uh, take advantage of um, uh, the printers that we have out today are, are relatively are relatively inexpensive, not like they used to be. And the, the process of printing has become much, much easier um, with, with ICC profiles and all that thing, uh, and all those things to make uh, your printing much easier. Thank you for that question. Um, uh, relationships are really very important. I, um, uh, this cop on the right-hand side, uh, if you notice, I didn't want to only take a picture of him. You can see, I also wanted to take a picture of where he works. It's important. It, it's it it tells the story. Lambertville uh, is a place in New Jersey, and I ended up going in there into his uh, precinct and and with a beautiful card telling him that I appreciate um, not only he, what he does but the rest of uh, uh, law enforcement. Uh, with you know, gave him my card, although I, I did before. gave I gave him two prints and and a beautiful uh, note card. Uh, a note card from Moab. They they make these intradelopes, which are beautiful uh, uh, note cards. And, um, you know, I got a beautiful thank you for him. So it's very, you know what, it's very rewarding. Besides selling it and making some money, it's also wonderful to be appreciated uh, for what you do. Um, homeless is, uh, is a very touchy uh, and very uh, close subject for me as well. Um, not not only capturing uh, their souls, but trying to uh, tell the story to hopefully 
uh, keep it in the media, know, uh, letting people know that there's so many people that are suffering uh, in our, not only our country, but in the world. I, I try to find out a little bit about them. Um, I try to donate a little bit, uh, uh, some money to them. Um, sometimes I have food, you know, I, if I know I'm going to do this specifically, I might, I might have uh, hamburgers or whatever. And I, I try to get a little bit of a story from them because I think that is really important besides just, uh, going out there and photographing them. Uh, great interaction with these young kids. Um, not too sure exactly. I, I didn't get into the big story uh, of, uh, uh, you know, everything in black for the most part, but you know what? They were more than happy to have their picture taken. No muss, uh, no fuss, no muss once again, and just letting them do their own things it makes for a very, very relaxing uh, capture. Same thing here. Being out of the way, uh, relationships, easy as this. A couple more examples. Any questions? Um, a lot of people are talking about the uh, the release forms, but right. I don't know if you want to get through this, and then we'll kind of talk about it at the end. Okay. Yes. Let's do that. Okay. Because I'm coming towards the uh, towards the end here. What? Uh, how many minutes are we on now, Paige? Um, we're at an hour and a half. Where? Hour and <laughs> hour and a half. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going real. Th I'm going to go real quick. Uh, some uh, images that we don't understand, I think, is important, like it's, you can see here. Uh, when you were a Vietnam veteran years ago, uh, you, you were shunned. Role models, something that we need today. Please go out there. If, it's, if you don't want to shoot uh, people out in the street, shoot your family, shoot your loved ones, shoot your friends. Uh, there's plenty of ways to, uh, to share your love. Um, seeing here, it's not about just seeing it, it's about feeling. You can see these two here uh, holding on to each other, which makes the picture. Guess what? You can say please and thank you, and it, that goes a long way. Same here. Sometimes it's just about picking up your camera. Um, please, uh, you know, uh, there's many, many things. The camera is a window in which you, uh, you see the subject, but your heart is really the time to click. Same here. Capture those expressions, patience. Once again, uh, real quick, the guy on the right riding his little bicycle, if you can see his reflector, it's a CD. You gotta love it. Some more intimate images. Tell the story, a little bit slice of America. Here's my iPhone picture. Again, you can use whatever it takes, a little more Americana. Places. More buildings, and it's about things too. No mask, no service. Tell the story of what's happening today. A little bit about window dressing, obscure images, even feet. Some more talking about today. Yep. Don't worry about the technology. Worry about what you're, what you're photographing. Dorothy, Dorothy Lang, one of my favorite photographers, Find your inspiration. It could be a photographer that you follow for many, many years. Um, different ang different cameras, different lenses, all that good stuff. Separate yourself. Um, if you see a dog, you should be able to photograph the person too. Uh, 2020 is a year of uncertainty. Go out there and photograph it, capture it, share it. And lastly, I talked about a little bit about being the hunter, the photographer, observer. I'm, I'm a little bit of everything, but I like to engage. And then lastly, um, some of the images from Haiti that are very, very important to me. As you can see, uh, very touching. The camera is a tool. You gotta have a purpose to use it. It comes from your heart, the way you see the world. Um, with the click of the shutter, I can inspire, and I do. And here we are, some of the prints that I've done. I've, I've since donated them um, to people that could probably use them in, uh, in their, their causes. Keep shooting, keep sharing, and, of course, keep looking upwards.
couple of people that I enjoy, Brisson, Lang, and, and Mary Ellen Mark. And that is it. I'm sorry I ran over. Oh, my no, God. it's fine. It's fine. So the main, a lot of the questions um, and discussion at the end is about when you talked about people walking away and you can't get them to sign a release form, can you use that image if you don't have their permission in books, magazines, um, social media? Do you yes. know the rules of where you can use those images? Yes. Now, if you're using it for an editorial, say you're going to put it in a newspaper, you should have their name. You know, in other words, if uh, say you were at a, uh, a festival and you're photographing people and um, everybody's having a good time. What I would do there is definitely uh, they, they know they're in a, uh, in a place where, uh, you know, their picture could be taken. It could be for a newspaper article, whatever it is. You should have their name um, and uh, and include that when you when you're doing anything like that. If you're out in the street and you're putting uh, posting uh, on your on the Internet or posting on our uh, Instagram or Facebook, any of that, you do not need a, a release. You do not need a release. If you're going to go into a book. Um, these are some of the other things you have to be careful. You have to be careful with, and that's why I always say try to get a moderate release whenever you can. It's it's it it'll uh, help, in, you know. It'll help you, you know, take care of any situations that might be a problem. Um, some of the people that I don't get it from, a lot of them I do get it as I I speak with them through uh, uh, communications, through emails and stuff like that. Great. Okay. Uh, by the way, if I can, real quick. Sure. Uh, uh, some of the paper, this is uh, the Entrada. Uh, this is the uh, Rag Bright 300, uh, one of my, probably one of my go-to uh, uh, papers. It's a matte black. Oh, thank you. It's a matte black, <laughs> paper, a matte back, uh, black paper that's just, just beautiful for both color and black and white. Um, if you want to go uh, something a little bit different, uh, the, uh, Moat makes... Uh, a specialty paper and it's it's kind of metallic i'm going to wave it around a little bit awesome for color this happens to be the their pearl which is beautiful beautiful color and they also make one that's called uh, i'm sorry this was slick rock uh this was slick rock pearl which is beautiful and they also make a slick rock silver and this is a, a maybe a, let me see if I can get it into a light that's a little bit not that <laughs> so, something like that. It's it's called slick rock uh, silver. A little a little harder to print with. When I say harder, you need the uh, the right subjects um, to photograph um, something that's monochromatic for me. Something that's monochromatic and has great detail works works really really nice uh, just like uh some of those subjects that i had shown you before so uh boy i took up a lot of your time sorry guys i hope i hope you learned a lot from uh you know what i had to share today and uh, if you, if you had to leave please join on the on the in, on the replay as as uh, Paige had said yeah, you'll receive a link um, in 24 hours to the recording, and then we'll also be posting this to our YouTube channel. So if your screen was freezing or you had any problems, then you can definitely watch the um, recording and ask us questions there as well. So thanks, everyone, so much for joining us, and thank you, Jim, for taking the time for us today. That was awesome. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today, and I hope uh, you were able to take out some uh, good information and something that you can share uh, in your own photography. Great. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.